If you've got a situation where when Dr. A works, one thing happens, when Dr. B works, another thing happens, and when Dr. C works, something else happens, that's not a system. You know, and so execution as a medical leader working in concert with our nursing and administrative leaders is critically important. But it also requires agility, this way of looking at things and say, how can we make it better? This constant, uh, relentless focus on how can this get better for the good of the patient, rule number one, and for the good of the people who take care of the patient. So uh, we talk about management and leadership in a few minutes, that tension comes out, but it's something that all of us as leaders, whether physician leaders, nurse leaders, or administrative leaders, really have to have that ability and understand when we're switching gears, if you will. And uh, finally, the last word goes to Shakespeare, as always, uneasy rests the head that wears the crown. It's not easy doing this. Uh, it shows in our faces, it shows in our bodies in terms of the stress that's involved with taking responsibility for 50,000, for 100,000 patients a year and all of their families and all the staff that take care of those people, if you will. So we always give a leadership self-assessment. Number one, are the talent, skills, and abilities of leadership and management ones you possess? Do your colleagues, family, and friends agree with you in this matter? <laughs> You know, because a lot of times we think we're leaders and they're thinking, man, I wouldn't follow that guy to the bathroom. I mean, you know, it didn't matter how much coffee I had this morning. This ability to have a 360 input. You know, when we talk about A team, B team later, we really want to have a sense of how do people look at us as leaders and what's the impact that we have on them and the folks with them. If there's a delta, if you don't possess those talents, skills, and abilities, how are you going to get them? We've spent a tremendous amount of time in, in, in our organization trying to make sure that we have those talents and abilities and training both our medical directors, our assistant medical directors, and frankly, all of our docs. Because we believe that medical leadership doesn't reside just with a chairman or medical director, but that every single shift in every emergency department requires leadership. It requires the charge nurse and the charge doc working closely together to adapt to the needs of the patients that come in at the time that they come in. Kirk will